morning, everyone. This is the Friday morning live. <clears throat> this is a wrapping up of the month um, of playing and you know honoring um, Mary Magdalene that um, priestess, goddess, and um, initiator, lover of Yeshua, Jesus, um, apostle of the apostles, and one of my great teachers. Um, and I wasn't sure how this last, uh, like what was going to be shared in this last um, video, but as I was sitting with it this week, what came back to me, because, you know, I've been kind of telling the arc of my own priestess journey, um, mostly to just, in part, to kind of metabolize it myself, to, um, to kind of get up to date with it myself and some of the pieces I hadn't really shared publicly yet, uh, and including this one, I have, haven't really shared it. And it's still, it still feels fresh. Like it still feels like, I don't know entirely what it means. Um, but it has felt like part of the rabbit trail for me. So I just wanted to share it. Um, what it is, is a dream that came to me last, it actually, I have the date on it, it was last October. And I remember waking up from this dream and feeling like that didn't come from me, that came from some somewhere else. And I wrote, I wrote it all down uh, as clearly as I could remember it right then. And then it, it kind of, it kind of drifted and I set it to the side and um, but it's come back a couple of times and yeah, I'll just be really curious to hear. Um, like I'd love some collaboration in, in sort of dream listening with this and, um, and, and, and kind of processing it in my own way too. So I thought I'd just read it. I, I don't know if that's going to feel kind of, I don't know whatever, but that's, that's how it's coming to me. So this is room 10, 24, 21. And I wrote, dream. I'm in a cathedral in Rome, St. Peter's or St. John Lateran. I'm just in a black bra and underwear. And I've walked to the front pew where the leaders are standing. Feels like the Pope or someone of similar status. I was late and they usher me into the pew. They're in long formal clergy robes. One says, put your robes on. And I did. I had to unzip one to fit it over my head. I remember it being kind of a struggle, like a hassle to get it on. And then a woman comes to the altar to lecture. She says she's going to read from a different special gospel. I wish I could remember this part. It was something like the Gospel of Mysteries or something like that. It was a giant old book laying on a pillow. She's actually um, lay, she, she actually lay, lays on the book. Uh, it's that big that she's laying on the book. And it also, oh, and also has it on her phone. <laughs> yeah. She just had to read for the first few lines or two but then recites the rest in song. And I remember it being so beautiful, but I cannot remember any of the words. Then it was announced that there would be a new ritual that hadn't been around with the people for 3000 years. We are, we are brought to the altar and there's this door well and stairs going down into a chamber. And one by one, we're all ushered down into it. It's totally dark and filled with wine. <laughs> I just have a knowingness that that's what it is. And we're submerged to our necks in the wine and we flow through the chamber. And it's like this dark, warm womb. It's so pleasurable. It feels so good, almost ecstatic to float through this river. 
And I have this knowingness that the wine is also ancient. I come out on the opposite stairwell and I'm aware that I'm on my bleed, which I am right now. And I have my diva cup in, but momentarily feel concerned that I've contaminated the wine, I've contaminated the sacred um, womb of wine. And then I have the thought, they must have accounted for this. They must have planned for this kind of possibility if they're going to chant, like, you know, shuttle all these people through it. The wine's sterile anyway, right? <laughs> that was my thought. So then I take off my wine-soaked robe, and someone, another woman, tells me that I have blood stain on my undergarment, this skirt, kind of this skirt-like white thing. And I look and I see that I've bled through. And I ask one of the clergy, other clergy, like, where's the bathroom? Um, and I'm directed to this door behind me. It's, it's on the right side of the altar. It leads into this large bathing suite. I do not remember this part. I'm just reading it for the first time again in a little while. Um, so it's in this large bathing suite and two men are in there bathing and there's this toilet off in the back, but there's no privacy. And I ask if there's another one more private or if folks would clear out for a minute so I can like change my ebook up and do what I gotta do. And that's the end. <laughs> that's when I wake up. And well, actually I think there must have been more after that. Um, hi there, welcome. I'm sorry you just missed. I was retelling uh, this dream vision that I had. But when I woke up, so I have to go back and listen to it, but when I woke up from it, I just felt so clear, like that did, that did not come from me. Um, it felt like a gift from the ancestors, felt like a message from the ancestors. It, it was so vivid and methodical and um, it, it had a texture that was different than other dream experiences that, that I had and immediately felt like I need to write this down and I did. And that's what I got. <laughs> So just to kind of track that in the arc of things, this was after um, like my, this was after the summer of um, Agape Sluts exploration. This was after uh, getting this insight about um, that, you know, no outside authority could name me a priest, could name anyone a priest. Um, and after I'm pretty sure it's shortly after I withdrew from the Roman Catholic women priests. So part of what I, what feels clear in that to me is this sort of reassurance, like, okay, yeah, you might not be formally being ordained, but on, on a deep level, I felt recognized as a priest. I felt, um, yeah, I felt acknowledged even in this sort of unexpected way by the what I perceive in the dream as the institution, by um, the you know the clergy of the cathedral of the of 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 Rome, even um, that there are at least in the dream there were these representatives of the official church who were like. Where you been? Like, get in here, put your robes on. Um, so, I don't know, that feels, um, that felt powerful to me. It felt charged to me in a, um, an unexpected way, in a, a, a really potent way uh, that I'm still listening around and still kind of unpacking and Yeah. And the wine, that river current of, that river of wine felt 
like this, like that underground current of erotic power, um, which I really interpret, I use that word as like the, the current of magnetic life juice, right? That, that, that the succulence of life that draws life to life. Um, that, you know, subatomic um, charge that keeps the atoms together. I don't know if that's how atoms work exactly, but um, it's, the, it's the magnetism of life. Um, and I can't help but kind of feel the sort of, you know, Dionysian symbolism of that image and of being drawn underground, of being, and, and of that being the ritual that we were sort of being reinitiated into. So anyway, I'll just leave it there. And I would love to hear from anyone who wants to share, like, are there any pieces of the dream imagery that land for you in a particular way that feel alive for you? And it, you know, it doesn't, it can mean something different for you than it does for me. That's, um, I think dreams, well, part of this is is perhaps an invitation to reanimate dream world um, communications as as a ancestral technology, you know, as a way that spirit is uh, is in communication with us, and that we can communicate with each other in other worlds. Um, I don't. I think sometimes it's just a you know our personal. Um, brain processing or whatever, I think sometimes. Um, but this def I don't know, this to me felt more than that. Um, and maybe I'm overlaying meaning where it's not needed, but I would love to hear, you know, if, if there are any pieces that speak to you. And then if you have had dream experiences where you felt like, no, that was something more, um, please share, please let me know in the, in the comments. I would love to hear that as well. And if there are any pieces of this that kind of um, connect to data in your own, you know, what you're, what you're sussing out in the world in your own spiritual path, path, your own priestess, priest, priestessing path, uh, whatever that looks like for you. Yeah. I'm just really curious to make connections uh, in the web with, this kind of material, like kind of fleshing out the constellation of data that's emerging in real time right now around like what wants to happen in the world? What are we a part of happening in the world um, right now? So hi there, thanks for joining. I'm actually just wrapping up, but I'm glad to see you. And um, please go back and have a listen because I, um, shared my, my last little story here around being a priestess and love would love to hear how it, it, it lands for you all. So let's just take a breath in together and I'll offer a thank you so much to the, um, my stewards of my dream world of our dream worlds. Um, thank you so much to Mary, and all the other guides and guardians who've been um, clearing this path for for all of us, um, but I'll offer a particular thank you for just my own uh, the the gifts brought to my own journey um, and challenges. Okay. So that's my share for today. Um, please, please, please share in the comments if you like or um you know send me an email or whatever means and yeah we'll stay in touch and um let me see if there's anything else i want to share about that yes so the roots and rhythms offer i actually didn't get enough people um to that i didn't reach my goal of enrollment to make that a sustainable offer so I um, am moving forward with the core group that, that
that I do have, but I'm not exactly sure how that's going to flesh out as far as the wider community offering. So I just wanted to give that update. And um, if there are any folks who had felt on the fence and you still and you feel like you have a little more space now, um, you can still join. Um, it's the ask is for a commitment of six months between with a, a financial uh, contribution between 50 and 200 dollars a month and the goal is to really provide a kind of a little bit of stability on my part honestly um, and so that I can know that I can provide this work more widely in a, a more sustainable way so yeah if you're on the fence and feel like okay this gives you a little more space we are moving forward with it and I'm, I'd happy be happy to hold you in as well um, okay take good care uh, maybe see you in the dream world have a, have a good one